This is the Cam Wah Chung Museum in John Day. In the late 1800s, it was the center of the Chinese culture here. 2,000 Chinese helped mine the area. And in about a 40-year period from 1862 to 1899, um, they got, in today's dollars, almost a billion dollars worth of gold out of this area. So it was a huge gold mining area. At first, they settled in Canyon City, south of John Day. And their settlement there burned down under suspicious circumstances in 1885. They were not allowed to rebuild, so they were all pushed down into this area, which is actually a floodplain. It was not a very desirable place to be. So there was a lot of hostility against the Chinese, um, especially in the early days. So when you look at the building, you notice that there's iron over the windows. That was to try to keep the bullets out. So um, sometimes on Saturday nights, the cowboys would get drunk and they'd ride through here and they would start shooting at the building. So when we go inside, you'll see that the door is also covered with tin, also to try to keep the bullets out. Unfortunately, tin does not stop bullets and so there are bullet holes in the door. So later they put these um, folding iron doors over the top. But we know that um, this tin must have been replaced at some point because when you see the back side of the door, you see that sometimes the bullets actually came all the way through and they just put cork in there. And then they would have put this bar across here at night so nobody could force the door. The Cam Wah Chung building served as an apothecary. Inside, there was a store. It was run by Doc Hay and his business partner, Lung On. Patients would sit in this chair where Doc Hay would determine their illness by taking their pulse. He could feel 24 different pulse points. And when he uh, figured out what he thought was going on with you, he would go into his apothecary shop, which is essentially how he left it in 1948. He'd put together a formula for you. There are about 500 different herbs in there. They're still in there for the most part. Most of them came from China. And then on that second shelf, one of my favorite things is um, there's another small bottle, and above that bottle, there's a box that's pulled out just a little bit. That says dragon bones, and it's actually ground up dinosaur bones. So um, even today, Chinese healers will use that to treat mental illness. In the early days, he could not assume that you would have a measuring cup at home. And so it tells you how many beer bottles of water to mix with your herbs before you boil them up. He would assume you'd have that. By 1900, most Chinese moved on after the gold mines shut down. Doc Hay had to shift clientele. And so um, there was a ranching family in this area. They still live in the area. One of the sons got tetanus. The white doctors thought he was going to die. They couldn't help him. And so the family came over and got Doc Hay. Um, Doc Hay treated him and he lived. And then people started coming from Idaho, Washington, California to see him. Um, we have letters from people as far away as South Dakota. Um, he was brought up on charges three different times by some of the white doctors for practicing medicine without a license. Um, and the first time he was acquitted in an hour and a half. The second time local people wouldn't sit on the jury. And then the third time the judge just threw it out. So um, very, very well respected by the end of his life. Doc Hay's partner, Lung On, was an enterprising businessman. He was a bootlegger during Prohibition. So if you look um, through this door here onto the floor in there, there's a trap door in the floor. They found about 100 bottles of alcohol under the floor. Um, the city took custody of it, and by the time it got back to our collection, about half of it had disappeared on the way. So, um, and then the other thing Lung On did is he opened the first automobile dealership east of the Cascades and he had the only gas station in the county. Most Chinese actually um, went back to China. That was their goal, make enough money, go back, take care of their families. If they died in the U.S., they, were, um, they made prior arrangements that their bones would be dug up and taken back to China because it was very important to be buried somewhere where someone would take care of your grave. But um, these two men actually chose to be buried in John Day. Um, they had ample resources to make another choice, but so we assumed that this was where they ultimately felt like was their true home.